Hey guys, I noticed that some new players have been having trouble clearing hunts, and when I click into their sets, I notice some less than optimal mantles in their equipment. So I'm going to make a video on all the items that can go into the mantle slot for PC players, and my thoughts on each one of them. There's 20 items to go through, so I'm not going to waste too much time and dive right into it. Starting off, we have the Vitality Mantle. This item is the definition of noob trap. Unfortunately, as you start off the game, you are very limited to better options. So most players will likely have this as their sole defensive option for a good while. The flat HP increase is nice to have in the early stages of the game, but the Vitality Mantle quickly loses its value later on where a single attack from a monster will put the mantle on its horribly long cooldown. The upgraded decoration slots give it a level 4 and level 2 decoration, but you won't get much use out of it if it will expire from one missed input. On the other hand, we have the Gilly Mantle coming up next. And this mantle was something that I was sleeping on until I returned to Monster Underworld. The Gilly Mantle will instantly remove you from Monster Enmity. This mantle is a key component to successfully doing a cannon start in Fatalis Arenas if you are inclined to do so. The real reason why the Gilly Mantle shines is in egg delivery quests. The egg delivery quest can be annoying as hell since monster will often chase you down, roar, or cause a flinch that will cause you to drop your egg. Using the Gilligan Mantle prior to picking up the egg will guarantee that you have 2 minutes of time to find the proper route and bring it back to your campsite box. The upgraded double level 3 decoration is completely useless. You will lose the effect as soon as you re-enter combat or take damage anyways. Next is the Glider Mantle. It's a nice item to have in terms of quality of life as you navigate through the Coral Highlands. There is a particular location where the Glider Mantle allows players to skip a ton of climbing and take you to the very top of a cliff where some monsters go to sleep. Being able to easily abuse air currents and lifts can help you get more mounts for an easy topple, and the Glider Mantle also adds additional contribution to the mount threshold. It is definitely worth picking up if you are navigating the Coral Highlands. Later on, you will unlock Glider Mantle upgrade, which provides two level 4 decoration slots. This was game changing when it was first released, as I recall there were many builds that took advantage of a tool specialist secret armor skill to maximize mantle uptime, allowing players to swap between a glider mantle and one of their choice constantly to have absurd mantle uptime, while granting two level 4 decorations to compensate for the decoration cost. Next up is the challenger mantle. The challenger mantle has absolutely no use in the early game save for maybe saving a friend from dying once every 5 minutes. At that point, you're better off using a life powder. However, there are exactly two uses that can come from using the Challenger Mantle later on. In the Guiding Lands, this mantle can be used to lure monsters to outside of your camps while you're in a party, so your team can sp spam traps underneath the monster to power farm levels. For Safi Jiva Sieges, you can use the Challenger Mantle to get an extra roar out of Safi Jiva, giving your allies some more time to position and push Safi towards the outer edges of the arena. Aside from that, taking a single hit makes this mantle and its decoration slots useless, and doesn't have much else going for it. Next we have the Bandit Mantle. Surprisingly enough, the Bandit Mantle used to be a core component of some Zenny farms, thus trapping the Greatest Jagras and unloading into its stomach with a Ribbon Heart while having the mantle on resulted in a very efficient Zenny farm for newer players. Unfortunately, there isn't much else this mantle does, and after 3 minutes, you will not have accomplished much in the hunt, aside from being a fair bit richer afterwards. As players reach further into the endgame, Zenny becomes the last of anyone's concern, so this mantle becomes completely obsolete. Following up the Bandit Mantle is the Apothecary Mantle. The Apothecary Mantle has made an appearance in my last video, helping our CC sets hit that Paralyze and Sleep Threshold much easier. I also use this mantle in Safi Jiva Phase 1, as the mantle will help proc my blast much faster, giving me the ability to quickly push Safi towards the edge of the stage. The decoration slots are not too bad, but more often than not, you will probably be under slotting them to add a bit of extra build up for your statuses while you have the mantle up. The Immunity Mantle is a very niche mantle, but I find it very underrated. The 2 minutes where you're immune to the all status effects is huge when facing off against monsters like the Night Shit Paolumu. Additionally, the mantle allows you to be immune to Dragon Blight, Fire Blight, Thunder Blight, and Ice Blight of Elatrian. The level 3 decoration slot allows players to put in a Clutch Claw boost while they have the mantle on, so light weapons can have an easier time tenderizing during that time. Following the immunity mantle, we have the Impact Mantle. 
The impact mental stun effect is nice to have for monsters with lower stun thresholds and can be a great way to chain crowd control effects when your weapon lacks any stunning attacks in their kit. Dual Blade players can put this mental on before doing a Blade Dance to quickly deplete monster stamina and even get a fast KO. The decoration slots are not too bad, giving you a level 3 and level 2 slot, which lets you fit in two slugger decorations for more stun potential. The next mental is a personal favorite of mine, and also a staple in any player hoping to get an extra kick in their damage output. You can call me biased, but the Evasion Mantle is hands down one of the most satisfying mantles to use for hunts. On top of granting more iframes than a maximum level evade window armor skill, it will glow and give players an increase in damage upon successfully iframing through an attack. The two level 2 decoration slots make it limited in what you can put in, but it still offers more options than other popular mantles. One of the more popular mantles is the Rocksteady Mantle. This mantle is a staple in many builds, ranging from beginners to hyper sweaty speedrunners, providing a percent damage reduction to any damage taken, and making the player immune to any flinches, roars, or displacement effects makes this the perfect mantle for squeezing out a wall bang or carding to a multi-hit attack like Alatrian Lightning Horns. Its upgrade with two level 1 decoration slots leave a lot to be desired, but a fair trade-off given the sheer power of the mantle. Personally, I am slowly preferring this mantle over the temporal for easier hunts so I can worry less about iframing roars and dodging animations and focus on doing damage. For the next 5 mantles, I'll talk about all of them concurrently and add some interesting notes afterwards. The elemental mantles all serve a similar purpose in which they will reduce all damage of the corresponding element and makes the user immune to that element blight as well. Additionally, the fireproof mantle mitigates burn damage, waterproof mantle makes you immune to the muck, as well as prevents you from being pushed by Namiel's waves, iceproof prevents your stamina drop in the forefrost reach and makes you immune to deep snow, and dragonproof makes you do a bit more dragon damage and gives you extra elder seal. Each mantle comes with two level 2 decorations, except for the dragonproof mantle, which has a level 2 and a level 1. The temporal mantle is a great mantle to have when you're learning monster movesets. It'll grant the user up to 6 free dodges from attacks that would knock you backward, mitigating any potential damage that would have been done at the cost of mental duration and cancelling your animations. Players often pair this up with the Rocksteady Mantle for approximately 3 minutes of endless defenses. Due to this mantle's power, it is also given two one-slot decorations for its upgrade. One mantle that not everyone would have is the Assassin's Hood. It will allow a player to move slightly faster, and guarantees double damage and critical hit until the first instance of damage on a monster that is unaware of you. This is used for a few cheese strats and skips, such as the dragon ammo on light bowgun. This mantle can be amazing for scripted sequences, but I do not recommend going ham with this mantle regularly. The last three items are boosters, which are items that you can place onto the ground to create an area of effect where the booster is placed. The health booster is a great item to have for new players, since they'll be taking a lot of damage as they learn the ropes. But I recommend using a Rocksteady or a Temporal Mantle, or farming up a health augment from the Guiding Lands later on. I've also seen strategies where players would place down a health booster during the Latrian Eschaton Judgment. The next of the boosters is the Cleanser Booster. It nullifies and removes status effects, as well as blights, acting as a stationary immunity mantle for your party. This is great for party play, but the lack of decoration slots makes the immunity mantle the more preferred option for solo players. Last of all is the Affinity Booster. This booster was amazing in the earlier stages of the game, as it provides players with a 50% affinity buff for just stepping into the area of effect. This buff lasts for a short duration after leaving, so they can still play near the booster while maneuvering. However, this booster falls off heavily in the latter stages of the game, where players have more options to cap out their affinity, and thus making the item obsolete. And that is all the mantles and mantle slot items covered. God, I thought it'd never end. I hope that I was able to help you make better choices in your mantle options, as the mantle combinations can drastically alter the course of a fight. If you have a favorite mantle combination, feel free to let me know what it is down in the comments. Good luck everyone on your hunts, and I'll see you next time.